And life began about three and a half billion years ago. Those numbers are always kind of flexible and changing because they need a lot of time for evolution to work. Evolution can't happen in 5,000 years or 10,000 years. That's why the uh, calendar keeps expanding. It keeps getting longer because they realize how much time they need for this to happen. And that's the crazy thing. People say, well, man, I can't see how that could ever happen. How, how like, let's say a reptile will all of a sudden give birth to a baby reptile that would have wings sprouting out of its back. That doesn't seem plausible. Well, you might not think it is, but let's give it a 4 billion years. And then maybe it can happen. Well, yeah, maybe in 4 billion, it can't, can't. They need a lot of time for it to even have any sort of plausibility. Chance, uh, evolutionists are now trying to say that it's not chance, that natural selection is a very powerful force and it's directing everything. They almost give natural selection and nature the same intelligence that God has. They'll speak about nature like it's God. The natural selection and nature was directing these forces, causing all of this diversity. No, it's really ultimately chance. If there's no intelligence directing it, it's chance. It's an accident that happened. It's not something directed by anything. And then the struggle for survival, that those stronger organisms like the, the finch beaks allowed those uh, finches to live and the other ones to die, which led to this evolutionary process that leads to all the forms of life we see today. That's really the three elements that are in evolution. Well, this is one uh, quote I found, and there's a number of quotes. I won't give you all of them, but uh, l let's look at this quote from a prominent scientist. It's good to keep in mind that nobody has ever succeeded in producing even one new species by the accumulation of micromutations. Now, what he's saying is scientists who have tried, they've tried to do this. They've tried to take a biological organism and through micromutations form a new species. They've tried to do this. Scientists working on an intelligence, working on this, trying to make it happen. Never happened. Never happened. Doesn't happen. Never succeeded. Darwin's theory of natural selection has never had any proof, yet it has been universally accepted. Let's go to the next quote. It's this. The more statistically improbable a thing is, the less we can believe that it just happened by blind chance. This is Richard Dawkins, who is an atheist, avid atheist, attacks people who believe in God uh, with, with venom. He is uh, he's angry about it. <laughs> Let's put it bluntly. But Richard Dawkins, he says, the more statistically improbable a thing is, the less we can believe that it just happened by blind chance. Superficially, the obvious alternative to chance is an intelligent designer. And the problem is, mathematician after mathematician are coming out saying, evolution is statistically improbable. That life began in some primordial ooze or somehow developed into all of the diversity we see today is statistically improbable. Well, the only other option really is intelligent design. The only uh, competing explanation for the order we all see in the biological world is the notion of special creation. Another scientist comment on that. So there really are two options that we have before us. That's why evolution so vigorously defends evolution, because they know the only other option is to start looking at intelligence. And really the only intelligence, bottom line, that can do what we see around us is God, who has the power to do that even though some would say it could come from aliens. Atheism, I like this, uh, I saw this poster and I, I kind of liked it, so I thought I'd share it with you. Atheism or, or evolution, the belief that there was nothing and nothing happened to nothing. And then nothing magically exploded for no reason, creating everything. And then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits, which then turned into dinosaurs. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> now let me say this. Not everyone who believes in evolution is an atheist. Um, many are. And there are people who are believers, who love the Lord, who uh, believe that God was directing evolution. And you know what? That's okay. If, that, if they've really looked into it and they've really studied this, that, that certainly is true of some people here in this church. And I don't want to make it sound like anyone who believes in evolution is a heretic. There are people that believe this. I guess in my studies and in my reading, of the debate between creation versus evolution and finally years ago beginning to read the other side of the story I would say that I'm going to trust God's word and the fact that scientists weren't there God was and God revealed to to Moses as he wrote the book of Genesis how he created and science can be very wrong take for example this is a very simplistic illustration of this if you walked into the Garden of Eden one minute after Adam was created one minute after Adam was created you would look at Adam and say okay there's a, a man 
He's about 23, 24, 25 years old. Not sure how old he looked, but I would assume around that age. 23, 24, 25 years old. When in reality, he'd only been there for one minute. He was only one minute old. And science would look at Adam and say, are you crazy? He can't, he can't be one minute old. He's 23, 24. Look at him. It's understood when you don't believe in God that you can get a lot of false conclusions about creation. And that's really what's happened. What is creation science? It really is that. It's science. It's science that pulls together the evidence from God's word. And I believe that is evidence, by the way. God's word is evidence for how creation happened. And scientific observation, looking at creation, looking at nature around us. What's a creationist? It's a person who believes in a creator who brought about the existence of the universe, the world, and its inhabitants for a divine purpose. That there is a reason why we're here. That we are created with the image of God stamped on us by a loving creator who has a purpose for this universe. And his complexity and his design are seen all around us. But science rejects God. They will assume that talking about God is a philosophical thing and cannot enter into the scientific discussion. They've made that arbitrary rule. It's God is not an option. So we will endeavor, no matter how little evidence is there, no matter how little proof is there, no matter how many gaps are in the fossil record, we will keep promoting this theory because we cannot allow God to be an option. Evolution is a theory universally accepted. Listen to this. This is not a creationist saying this, by the way. Evolution is a theory universally accepted, not because it can be proved to be true, but because the only alternative, special creation, is clearly impossible. Why? Because it involves God. And God cannot be an option. We can't talk about God being an answer to any scientific realities we see out there. I'd like to know who made that rule. So would Michael Behe, by the way. We're going to see his testimony in just a minute. He says this, it is often said that science must avoid any conclusions which smack of the supernatural. But this seems to be both bad logic and bad science. Science is not a game in which arbitrary rules are used to decide what explanations are to be permitted. Michael Behe was a prominent evolutionist. And when he began to look at the evidence, he said evolution cannot explain this. There must be some sort of intelligence behind the complexity we see today. Let me show you a little video. Stephen Meyer, another scientist, he makes this comment, and I agree with it. Between two different interpretations of the same scientific evidence. It's not science versus religion. It's science versus science. All right, that's simple, right? It's not science versus religion. That's what people want to tell you, that, it's, that if you're believing in creation or in intelligence, you have to be doing that for religious reasons. No, it's science versus science. Uh, the scientific facts are leading people to believe there must be an intelligence behind what we see. It's science versus science. They're looking at the same evidence, and there's two uh, theories out there. And I certainly hold to intelligent design creation. What's the domino effect if you believe in evolution without God? There are some serious implications. Prominent evil, uh, evolutionist William Provine candidly conceded that if Darwinism is true, then there are serious implications. There's really no evidence for God. If evolution, atheistic evolution, is true, there's no evidence for God. Uh, there's no life after death. Why would we believe in life after death if evolution is true? There's no absolute foundation for right and wrong. If we all descended from apes, who are you to tell me that I'm right, and who am I to tell you that you're wrong? There, there's no moral code. There's no moral foundation. There's no ultimate meaning for life. We're here by accident. There's no meaning to life. And that's uh, a quote from William Provine in Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Faith. Jesus was clearly mistaken. If evolution is true, Jesus is mistaken. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 19. He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? When did he make them male and female? From the beginning. Evolution will tell you there's billions of years that lead up to the first human being appearing on the planet. Jesus said, you know what? In the beginning, he made them male and female. He didn't say, after uh, 15 billion years. He made them male and female. Look at Mark 10, 6. It's even clearer. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. At the beginning, God made them male and female. There weren't millions of years leading up to Adam and Eve. I believe that God's word gives us a real clear plan of how it happened. Jesus gives us a real clear plan. And we shouldn't ignore that. We shouldn't ignore the statements of Christ about how creation happened. Because Jesus was there. In fact, he did it. The Bible says that all things were created by him and for him and through him. He was there. He did it. 
The genealogies of the Bible are an error. Why? Well, uh, here's one. The son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam. If evolution is true, there was no Adam. There was no Adam in the Garden of